Hi, Jim Brandt here with Best Practical, and this video is about a big update to one of our extensions that allows you to put custom forms right in your RT instance. Uh, so let's jump right in and take a look. Uh, you can see right here I'm logged in as a, a regular uh, unprivileged user, which means I'm in the self-service interface. So I don't see the full RT, I just see sort of my tickets and I can manage those. And if I come over here to the home menu, uh, I can see that there is an extra uh, option in this menu that you probably don't see in your RT, uh, and that is this forms option. So if I go ahead and click on that, uh, I come to this forms homepage, uh, and I've got a description here. I just have one form, uh, and basically it says that this form is for any kind of maintenance request. So that's the example that we're going to be going through here today is maybe you have this form to allow people to uh, submit requests if they need uh, some kind of maintenance done. Uh, so we've got an icon over here with the, the mop bucket. So we can click on that and we go into a form wizard, the start of a wizard here. So I've got some information here uh, about the form and I wanna go ahead and submit one. So I'll click next. And now I get some fields that I wanna fill out, some details on this request that I wanna put in. So all the normal things you'd expect on a form like this, uh, you get some fields that are required. If I try to sort of push past that, I'm gonna get a pop-up saying, hey, you need to fill out some of these fields. We've got tooltips. Uh, to give some additional information. Uh, so I can go ahead and pick one of these and start to fill this out. Um, on this one, uh, I can select, there's a couple of different values and there's, there's an other option. So if I pick the other option, you can see that there's a, a follow-up field and that actually flipped over to required as well because this is the additional field. If I pick other, they want some additional information here. So I could put in something like, um, Maybe it's window cleaning or something for my, my maintenance request here. And then a date at the bottom here. Uh, we go in and pick uh, our date and date and time in this case because I want to also pick a time. So I'll pick a day and then just go to maybe, I don't know, 1 o'clock. Uh, pick that. And then uh, if we go back uh, and then we come forward again, we can see that you know retains the values. So everything's there. So if I need to kind of go back and forth and fix something, I don't lose all of my work. Uh, and if we go ahead, now I just have just a general box, any other special instructions for this request. Um, maybe we'll note that the, uh, the windows are really dirty for this one. So, uh, and then if I go ahead and submit, maintenance request submitted, and I have uh, some information there. So uh, I've just gone through this form tools. I'm in RT. You can see uh, I'm in the context, the menus are up there the whole time. What was it that provided uh, all these forms that we went through? Well, that is what we're gonna show you now, the administrative side of that. So if I go over here uh, and I go into admin, uh, I'm logged in as root now, so I'm full super user. Come down to form tools. This is the item that uh, is providing all of this. And I can go to select, and now I can see all of the forms that are on the system. So this is the new, uh, the updated version of the form tools extension. So the form tools extension has actually been around for a while. In the previous version of it, it was uh, much more of a library of tools. And you really needed a developer to then come in and use that library and code pages that would then show up uh, in RT like what we've shown before. Now in this new version, we've added uh, a full UI to it that we're going to see now so that any administrator can come in and just do all of it right in the browser. So way easier than uh, the previous case, uh, both to initially create the forms and then also just for changes and things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and click on the form that I have right here. And we come into, this is the interface. This is the builder that allows you to create and update the forms. Uh, so this top section uh, is just some instructions uh, just some extra details just for when you first get started. Uh, so I'll close that up just to give ourselves some more room here. And then this is the modify page. So across the top here, the right hand side, these are all of the actual pages and the content. And then the left side is kind of a palette of all of the different things that you can put onto your pages. And you can just click through the pages with these tabs here. And what you do is when you are first building these out, you just grab the different elements from the left-hand side here and you just drag them over here and just put them wherever it is that you need to put them. And then you can move them around once they're over here, uh, whatever it is that you wanna do to build out your forms. Now on the left-hand side here, the top section are basically HTML 
uh, elements that you can put in. So the, the headings, that's what an H1, H2, those are just headings with different size fonts. Uh, and then you've got, uh, there's an HR if you just want to have a line go across the page and then a paragraph uh, that just allows you to do text. And that's what this first page that we saw in the test form when we went through, it was just the information on the page. So you can just use any uh, of these HTML elements to just put information on the page, whatever it is that will help your users uh, fill out the form the right way uh, and do whatever it is that, that you want them to do. Uh, the second section here are core RT fields. So if you're familiar with RT, requesters, owner, subject, things like that, uh, you can see here that I have subject on this. And when we went through the test, you actually didn't see subject on the page anywhere. And what I've done here, uh, we just click the pencil on any of these to edit. So I can just edit that. And I've left the, the label subject and then uh, I've put a default value on this, and then I uh, selected this option to hide it. So what it does is it creates a hidden uh, field on that page, and then it will set the subject of the ticket to whatever this default value is uh, when it gets to the end. So this allows you to, in your different forms, you can set uh, different subjects for the tickets that get created. So you might have multiple forms, possibly even that create tickets in the same queue, and then you'd be able to tell sort of which form they came from. And again, if you hide it, the user doesn't see it. You could also make the subject available. If you just wanted to let your user uh, set that, you could you could do that. And um, you can you know change the labels on some of these too, uh, if you want those to look uh, a little bit different. So that's just one of the things that we did with one of the core fields here. As you continue to go down the left-hand side, uh, then we get to a section with um, all of the custom fields. So when you first create a new form, uh, it's going to ask you what queue the ticket will get created in because all these forms basically at the end of the form you want to just create a ticket and then have all the fields filled out. Uh, so you pick that and once that's picked uh, then the interface knows which custom fields to display on the left hand side here. It's all of the ones that are available uh, for this queue. Uh, and same thing you can just drag those over as you go and then there's a couple of special on the bottom here, hidden fields that you can do. And if you're uh, sort of a, maybe a developer, uh, maybe you know a little bit of HTML, maybe you're doing a little coding, we've done some special things with hidden fields and things like that in the form, but probably most people won't use those too much. Uh, so uh, I've made some changes here and I actually don't wanna save those. So I'm gonna uh, just not save that. And then if we go over here, we could see, so here's the page that actually has some of those custom fields that I've already sort of dragged over and, and put on here. So you can see, you can just intersperse, you know, some of the text with custom fields, uh, whatever it is to help your users fill out the form uh, in the right way. Um, as I mentioned on the, the other field, you can come in and use a different uh, label for the form as it will appear to the users uh, different from what the custom field label is. So this, these are all good examples of this. So the custom field in this case is actually called request type, but uh, what I want the form to say is maintenance type, because that makes more sense for the user when they're filling out the form. And what you do is just when you drag that custom field over, you just give it a different label. Uh, and that way you don't have to go in and actually change your custom field because maybe users are already used to that uh, name that it has. Maybe you have uh, you know, some safe searches and things like that. So you can leave the custom field and have a different label uh, in the form. And this is also where you can set that uh, this field is required. So those settings, you can see the tooltips are in there as well. So you can just set whatever the tooltip is. And again, this can be different from tooltips that you might have set on your custom fields. Uh, this is the interface for that. Uh, dependency that was in there where it's required if, and then it just lists this other field, it's required if that field gets set to other. And that's how you set up the configuration on that. So even that is all right here uh, in the interface. Um, so you just go through, again, the, uh, the next buttons uh, and the previous buttons, those just happen automatically for you. You don't have to do anything for those. Uh, as far as the ordering, if you need to change the order, you just come in here and just change this sort order, and then it'll it'll change uh, which where that page appears relative to the other page, and then you can just remove a page as well if you need to. This final is just really informational. This will this will be shown. This is the last page shown after a ticket is actually submitted. Uh, and, and this just lets you set some expectations with the user. This is when we'll get to the request, uh, whatever it is that you want to show on that last page. So a couple more tabs up here uh, just to go through. Um, this is the page where you set the uh, information to show on that forms 
uh, homepage that we saw. So we can actually look at that here even as the root user. So uh, you can allow these forms to be seen by, again, unprivileged users, which is self-service, but also by privileged users. So you can put forms just in your regular RT if it just makes it easier for people to fill things out rather than just going uh, straight to the Create Ticket page. So this is um, the where that information is displayed. So you set it on this. You can upload icons. If you don't have an icon, it will just take the name of the form and just create like a block there that you can click on. So it's okay if you don't have an icon, but you can go find one. Um, you can just upload it here. And then down here, you just put again, the text to help users pick the correct form. Uh, this is HTML down here. So you can just use the controls uh, to change things like the coloring, um, or you can do things like set something to bold. And then if I just save that, uh, we just jump over here and reload that. We'll see that um, that stuff just shows up. So whatever kind of formatting you want to do there, you can just do right in the box when you when you set the text for that. Um, and then there's rights on forms as well. Uh, so right, right now it's just it, there's the one right show form, and this controls uh, who's going to be able to see this form. So when you're first developing, uh, by default, no one will see it. So you can work on your form, and you don't have to worry that it's going to pop up and someone's going to try to start using it like before you're done. Um, but then once you're uh, done with it and you want to make it available, you can just come in and this is just like other RT rights. So you can add a, a group that you might have added in your system somewhere or just use some of these system groups just to make it available uh, to everyone or you know whoever it is that you want to be able to see it. Uh, so that's how you go through and actually set up and configure uh, your different forms. And just to kind of follow through, uh, what happens when that actually goes in. I actually have a dashboard here with the maintenance requests, and this is what it's doing. It's just creating tickets here uh, with the different requests. And if I click on that ticket and we go in and take a look at it, we can see that all of those custom fields were filled out, and these are the values that I did uh, set when I was going through the form. Uh, and the content for that content box, that last thing, becomes the, the create. And this is similar to if I had created a ticket in the interface or even if an email came in, uh, it looks just the same. But that's where all of that information uh, ultimately ends up. So that is a quick tour of the new uh, really uh, big update to the form tools uh, interface. So it is available now. You can go and get it on, uh, find it on MetaCPAN. It looks like this. So it is RT extension form tools. Uh, so we hope for all you folks out there who have wanted to do this, we've gotten this request uh, a lot over the years that this makes it much more accessible. So we hope people will go and give it a try.